Yes, well, <coughs> welcome um, on this early morning. Um, <coughs> get my first slide up. Um, I prefer to talk about sound in visual arts um, and not about sound art. Um, why is that? Um, sound art is a very diverse field. Uh, ever since John Cage redefined music by saying that any um, organized sound is also music, um, there's been a lot in the field. Um, and I'm talking about uh, recordings, uh, editions, um, people making field recordings and organizing them and presenting them in some ways. But that is not what we do at Overtone and that's not what um, my work is about. My work is about the relation between sound and space and this is in, in visual work where there's always a balance uh, between sound and the visual. So that's what I want to talk about today. Um, so um, sound is just as well a material for me and for people like us. Um, just like um, steel or uh, wood or plaster or any kind of material would be for visual artists in general. What's the difference? Sound is an ephemeral thing. It's time-based. So sound is there one moment, and then it's gone again. So it's intangible. It's very difficult to, to even talk about sound sometimes. Um, but yet, for me, sound basically and fundamentally is um, part of a spectrum of energy. Uh, it's the audible part of waves that are around us. And energy has an impact on your body. If you have sound, you have loud sound, or if you have deep bass sound, you have felt it before, the waves impacting your body. Um, this is one of, of my works, one of the earlier works um, of like um, 2009, I think. Um, and what I wanted to create here is, is obviously an, an empty space with a ceiling. And the ceiling are 80 or 90 steel uh, tiles. Um, so visually, for me, it's an empty space, but on top of the tiles, there's these tiny pins, and they hammer away and create a lot of a noise um, in the space, and then it becomes very full acoustically. So it's this kind of tension or this kind of relation between the visual uh, and the acoustic is what I'm exploring. And I'll give you some examples of me and my colleagues uh, in this talk. Uh, this is a bit of a dark picture. It's actually much brighter on my screen. Um, maybe I'll quickly switch to the next one and hope it's a bit less dark. So this is a, a cylinder. Uh, I call it cell. It's, um, it's placed in a museum or in art center or this actually is a school for architecture. And it uh, basically is an interface for architecture, not the visual architecture, but the, the sound, that, sound waves that travel through infrastructure or pieces of architecture. So I've got different remote sensors set up in all over a building in different floors, and they transmit wirelessly the vibrations that they detect on those floors, or on stairs, on walls. It can be anything. It can be also windows and the impact of the wind on the window. This also creates vibration. So you can, as a visitor, you can enter this, um, this steel thing, and you will feel a reproduction of the vibrations on the inside of the cylinder. So it offers a kind of a sheltered private space where you have um, a connection with uh, anonymous vibrations traveling through different parts of the building, a public or semi-public building. That is an example of strategies that I, that I use. And this, this tension between private and public, <clears throat> just like between um, acoustic and visual, returns in, in a lot of, of, the, of the works. My colleague Arnaud Jacobs, <clears throat> who also co-directs Overtone with me, um, he made um, a couple of years ago um, a permafrost, which is this installation of two containers uh, of water. One container is always freezing, and the other one is at the same time defrosting. Um, why do I use this example? Because to work with sound is always a process of transduction. Uh, and what's transduction? Transduction is converting one form of energy into another. So basically any microphone is a transducer. <clears throat> and any loudspeaker is a transducer. Because what you do is there's vibrations in the physical world, you know, fluctuations in air pressure. They reach our ears and they are transduced in our inner ear. 
into electrical signals for the brain. But that's what we also do with technology. We pick up <coughs> with a microphone, we pick up the vibrations coming from my mouth now, and it will travel through an electrical wire as electrical fluctuations, and then they are converted again in a loudspeaker. So this process of transduction is essential. And um, what, uh, I, what Jacobs did with this installation is um, to submerge um, contact microphones in the water, and they pick up this kind of sound of the the slow process, uh, an imperceptible process of, of, of freezing and defrosting. Imperceptible, or well, quasi imperceptible, because it's a very slow process to freeze an entire uh, pool of water. Uh, and this is the result. So this is, of course, a stop motion video. Obviously, this was a, uh, the process was sped up in this video. Um, but the sound is real time. So this transduction process, um, to stay with the same artist now, um, Arnaud also uh, works in the inverse way. So to, to not record sound and transduce sound from a physical uh, reality that is in transformation, but also to deconstruct a loudspeaker, the other end of the transduction. How do we reproduce sound? Um, in this work, uh, it's in a series, it's called Induction Series, where he takes apart the elements of a loudspeaker. What do you have in a loudspeaker? How does it work? It works because you have an, uh, a flux of electrical energy, so it's the sound waves, but in the electrical form. And they make, um, they create a magnetic charge in an electromagnet. And so the electromagnet creates a field, a force field. And now this force field is fluctuating. So this force field is moving another magnet. And that magnet is attached to a surface. And this surface, <coughs> usually it's a cone, like uh, in a conventional loudspeakers or at home in your hi-fi system. And this cone, it will move the air. And this air is then moving again and reaching our ears. So it's always about waves, waves returning in different shapes, in different forms. So if you deconstruct a loudspeaker, what does that mean? You take it apart and you take uh, an electromagnet, uh, uh, other magnets to react to that, and surfaces uh, which are being moved by these magnets. Um, how this installation works, or a series of installations, uh, in this process of induction is there are these red elements that you see on the tin cans. <clears throat> Um, these red elements are coils, electrical coils, and they produce a magnetic field if you send, if you send um, uh, electricity through it. Um, this is what it sounds like. So you see the um, you saw the, the the coil moving. This is because of the energy that's sent through it, and this makes vibrations in the tin cans. And these tin cans act as surfaces that are moving, and they're all hollow spaces, so they resonate with the sound, and that creates this this um, specific resonance. And the sound that he uses on those cans in this case was uh, nature sounds like water, wind, and birds, uh, which makes of a nice contrast with the industrial. Uh, oil can um, um, composition. And so this is how it looks like in a museum or in a uh, gallery. This one is in Kristiansand in Norway, uh, I believe. Uh, so you can also enter here in these uh, constructions. Um, and this is also a way of, of dealing with space and, and in an equal level visually and acoustically. 
Then my work, back to my work, this is um, the, the image I showed, oh, very dark. Uh, the image I showed uh, in the beginning um, is this steel sky, I call it, Staalhemel in, in Dutch. Mm, it was a, a big project at the time, and it was a collaboration with IMEC, which is a research center. So for me, uh, because I said sound is, is just one part of an energy, uh, an energy spectrum, um, I use sound also to map other immaterialities, other energies around us and also inside us. So, uh, and because I was thinking about this, 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 uh, this dialogue or this um, opposition between um, public and private, I thought, what's the most private, the most intimate part of your body? It is, uh, of course, your brain, because it's the most impenetrable. Uh, it's like harnessed, sheltered in, uh, in the top and, uh, of, your, of your skull. Um, so this project deals with brain waves. It registers brain waves of a visitor, and there's one of them underneath. The other one is just watching. It's one of them wearing an EEG prototype, which registers brain waves, which was developed by EMEC and Holst Center. Um, <clears throat> so it's portable and wireless. You can walk around space, and you can walk underneath the rhythm of your own brain waves. That was the uh, the intention. So it, what you do is is you enlarge not only you enlarge into into ways you enlarge the. Um, you bring it to a whole different scale. Um, you enlarge the, the most intimate, the dynamic of your brain, and you put it in a semi-public space where everybody can walk. Because now there's only one person walking with him, but there's, there's many more people in, in different uh, uh, setups, in different locations, that can all walk underneath your, your um, waves. Um, so yeah, I'll show you maybe a, a video. The, uh, first I explain on the top, this is what it looks like above the, the steel plates. There's, um, well, I'll go here. And there's, this, there's this pin that will hit the plate and then there's a dampener system which is rubber and uh, which can make a difference in resonance if, uh, if the pin hits the steel. So, So, um, <clears throat> yeah, this was to explore how you could bring um, this, 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 um, the, 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 the insight of, 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 of somebody's personality, I mean, the, the, some certain traits of a dynamic of a personality which you cannot actually um, see or perceive, um, and which is the dynamic of focus versus relaxation. That was mainly what I was. For, um, I was using uh, in, in the brainwaves uh, analysis. Uh, and so you can see how somebody is um, focusing or, or relaxing and uh, thinking, and you can see different dynamics in his, uh, in his <coughs> personality at that very moment, in his consciousness. But then I also wanted to reverse things, uh, and the inverse operation is how do you bring sound from uh, the public space, from around you, into your head, so it's the inverse logic. And it doesn't necessarily need to be, have anything to do with brainwaves. I'm not like a brainwave artist. I used brainwaves as a strategy um, because I wanted to talk about sound in uh, a public space. So in this installation is called Black Box. Um, Black Box is, is, uh, contains uh, a computer and microphones and um, <coughs> eight transducers. It's kind of a, 
I've worked a lot also in performance um, works with specialization. So specialization in sound, it means you have a setup of like eight or more loudspeakers and you play with the sounds traveling from one to another loudspeaker. You create real dynamics in a, in a, in a space that is only present in sound. Um, but I, and, and with Stahlhemel was a specialization because you have 80 different points of sound, 80 sources of sound. Uh, and here I have eight. Uh, and the eight sources of sound are all on your skull. So your ears are free. You see the man, the visitor here, is closing his ears so he can focus on the sound in his skull. These eight transducers that are built in, inside the black box, you bring your head in contact with them, and then they will start playing the sound that was in the space before. So you get a representation of, this, of, of, of but it's, yeah, what kind of sound is it? It's people talking, it's people shuffling their feet, it's uh, the noise from next door. Uh, and these kind of things you get then played back on your head, uh, on your skull. So it vibrates and you feel the vibration on your skull, because sound is always uh, vibration um, or friction. Um, sound is always movement, you see. Um, and so you feel it and you also hear it. Why? Because the vibrations will transmit on your skull, through your, through your bones, through your jaw or through your, and eventually to your um, inner ear, to the bones of your middle ear. And this is actually also a technique that's used in, in people who are um, um, hearing impaired. Uh, in some cases, depending on the damage, they can use this kind of uh, bone conduction sound. And also Beethoven used it. Beethoven, in, when he was getting deaf, he was biting in a stick. The stick was clamped in the piano and he would hear the vibrations from the piano frame through his teeth. So in my case, uh, I wanted to make a kind of a um, whirlpool of sound on your head. It starts with eight points, then they all start moving, and the sound is shortened, and in the end, you, um, <clears throat> you feel just a click, and the click is hopping. It's like an ultra-short version, a condensed version of the sound that was in the room, and the, the click will start dancing on your head, and it feels really like there's an insect inside your head. Um, that is, I cannot, that's one of the things with documenting the, the kind of art that we do. Um, I cannot r replay this sound because you, it, I mean, it's tactile. It's, you have to feel it. If I would play it, you would just hear a click. It doesn't, it doesn't really have an effect. So here's also a view, ah, it's too dark. But you see the, 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 um, the orange yellow um, brass disc that's in there. That's like a, a transducer that plays the vibration. So back to now to today, actually. Uh, what's happening today? What am I working on? This was the last piece um, in, um, presented in Kortrijk in, in the spring. Uh, and it will be presented again in Brussels, in uh, the Centrale, La Centrale, that's uh, for an exhibition of Overton, curated by Nicole Jean Gras. Uh, and we will bring together a lot of different um, pieces um, that deal with sound in art, and some of them even have no sound, so it's also about sound. Um, and this piece was all, will, all, will also be um, will placed there uh, in the vitrine in, uh, in the street in the back of uh, La Centrale. Uh, what's this piece? It's um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm tracing um, immat immaterialities in materialities. Basically, I mean, the materiality is the physical matter. It can be a brain, yes. It could be a building, an infrastructure, or architecture. Uh, right now, I'm focusing on, on materials as such and how they degrade. Because if materials degrade, they always create sound. And of course, everybody knows that if you push on a material very hard, eventually it will break and it will give a, a cracking sound. But this kind of process also happen, happen on, uh, on a on a micro scale, even on a nano scale, in materials themselves. And then they produce cracks or um, tears, um, um, which are not in the audible domain, but they're still sound. They happen with a, a speed that is unimaginable for us, uh, and it is uh, also far too high to hear. So the, the cracks that are happening in a material that's degrading by corrosion they are like uh, 150,000 hertz or more, and we only hear until 20,000 hertz. So 
hertz is uh, cycles per second. So if some, something moves one time per second, it's one hertz, you're not going to hear it. But from 20 hertz onwards, we start hearing sound. And until 20,000 uh, cycles per second. So this is 150,000 cycles per second, and I'm trying to capture those with, um, with um, a sensor. Um, the sensor is just an elaborate um, and professional industrial uh, contact microphone there. And this is um, a setup which is based on a test in a scientific lab. Uh, in the scientific lab, they will test materials for their resistance. Um, <clears throat> And it's called a buckling uh, setup, buckling test, or knick test in Dutch. Um, so you bend the material until it uh, buckles, falls back on itself. Here I use uh, rocks. Um, the rocks are, in fact, uh, mineral, uh, iron mi mineral holding rocks. Um, so there's iron present here in the rocks. There's iron in the steel plate, and uh, it's brushed steel. And there is, in the end, the corrosion, the corroded uh, version. How do I corrode it? I use a, a salt vapor that is activated from time to time. It surrounds the material and it degrades more and more. It corrodes more and more. It creates little, um, it's called pitting, <coughs> pitting corrosion, in little holes, um, not equal corrosion. That, if, that will produce a different type of sound. Uh, the pitting corrosion will create a crack uh, once in a while. And that's what I register. And people, it, you cannot predict when it happens, of course. So this is a piece about waiting and about silence. It's silence most of the time. And some of the time, you don't know when, it can be five times a minute. And it can also be one time in two hours um, that you will hear uh, the material bending and cracking. Uh, so it's about waiting and um, yeah, the, the silence to be punctured by, by, it's about suspense basically. And that's why the suspense is present, present both in the acoustic sense and in the visual sense, in the sense that it is bent and waiting to, to be destroyed. Yeah, so this is another picture of it. Um, then, yeah, so in Overtone, the platform that I represent, we have some partnerships with academy, uh, academic research and industry. Like I told you, EMEC um, was uh, a partner uh, for the nano electronics. Uh, and here I work together with uh, in engineers in, uh, in Leuven. Um, and Arnaud also works together with, engineer, with um, physicists, uh, scientists in Leuven to, yeah, to to get inspired by and to find out uh, calculations that we need or uh, strategies that we need to, to create this kind of work. This is uh, Arnaud's uh, art sci latest art science piece. And this is um, a heliophone. And this is actually on our terrace on, a, on the, the place where we work in the World Trade Center here in Brussels. Um, um, what it does is it captures with a, a sun collector. This sun collector is the upper part, and it, follow, it tracks the sun, the position of the sun. So if it has a, a real perpendicular relation to the sun, it, um, it captures optimally the light waves. The light waves, they are, um, they are uh, caught, trapped into a, a small cell of carbon. The carbon heats up, and so the light is converted, transduced into heat waves. And heat waves, they displace air. And if air is displaced, you have sound. So you have waveforms. So um, that's what comes out at the bottom, at the, at the, at the, the cone, uh, the speaker, let's say. Um, this is the sound. About Overtone, I want to say we found it together this platform because this we, we felt there is a need for expertise. If you want to work in visual arts with sound, you see sound has its its, its own medium. It has it's immersive, it's penetrative. Um, you cannot. I mean, there's not a lot of museums or galleries that are uh, equipped with um, uh, the right expertise to handle uh, sound works. So there's also not much uh, support um, in 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 organizations who deal and produce these kind of artists. So we founded this platform where there's an exchange. Uh, there's an exchange of knowledge, an exchange of funds, an exchange of uh, technical 
uh, technological expertise um, and tools. Well, we have production residents. That means we produce people. They present a project to us, and we will um, <clears throat> put some money in it. Um, up to a year, they can stay with us, working with us, and um, then we will distribute the work in different uh, presentation uh, formats in, in art centers or festivals or galleries or museums. Um, there's also research residence, residencies because we are um, a bit underfunded, so we um, uh, absolutely want to help more people, but they come by and, and it's basically on a, ba that's based on the, the dialogue and on talking and exchanging um, knowledge. And um, <clears throat> that's people who work from, from uh, different fields, um, can be performance, but mostly the visual arts as well, and they want to explore a certain uh, sound-related aspect of their work, and uh, they stay some time with us. Um, the piece that I show here is uh, by Gert Artsen. Uh, it has been presented uh, in Brussels and actually is now this weekend. It's the last weekend you can watch the, some pieces of Overtone in Imal. Uh, Imal is located at the Kolmenekai, uh, Keo Charbonnage. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's the last weekend. There's two works of Overtone there and there's a third work related with sound as well. Because this uh, expo is a joint venture of Werktank uh, and uh, Overtone. Werktank does experimental uh, and video-based, image-based uh, art. Um, this piece is by Gert Aertz, it's Alphabet of Nature, and this is based on uh, the research by, uh, by Wolfgang von Kempelen in the, uh, I think, 18th century, but I might be wrong, who was the earliest um, innovator or pioneer in, in thinking about sound synthesis, um, about speech synthesis. So he, he managed to make models of how sound uh, speech can be reproduced, the vowels that we use, how can it be reproduced with um, like um, resonant cavities. Um, and to, if you blow air through a resonant cavity, like a flute, but with a specific shape, and if the shape resembles the shape of our vocal tract and mouth and lips, uh, then you can produce different sounds, different vowels. This, um, these objects are 3D printed, but then they are treated, uh, and the, the, the print is also, it contains bronze, bronze particles. So it's bronze objects basically that, um, that receive a stream of air. So there's a compressor that sends the air through all these wooden, um, wooden tubes. Uh, and uh, you can hear the vowels of, of, of uh, human vowels uh, through these different objects. Um, so it's based on phonetic research. Um, uh, how, what's the position of your mouth and how can you uh, create uh, this shape and make an, uh, a sound object with it. Um, this is Jeroen van der Zande. Um, this is um, presented all over Europe, uh, one of our first pieces that we produced, and it's a feedback system. So you have a microphone that you see there on the bottom, and you have loudspeakers going up and down through the tubes. So it's a bit of a condensed space, condensed air space, uh, and the distance will diminish or increase. And that means that there's feedback changing between. What's feedback? It's when you have sound that comes from a loudspeaker and it goes, back, it goes into a microphone, it gets sent back to the loudspeaker, and you have a loop, you have like a circuit. And this creates feedback, but everybody knows if I would hold this microphone in front of the speaker, you would have a shrill, uh, uh, whistling tone, and that's feedback. So he plays with feedback as a, as a principle to, to create compositions. which is Katerina Undu. It's also something we produced. Um, um, it is called Creatures Cluster. It's a lot of uh, components, electrical components. Some make light and some make sound. But they also have uh, components that receive light and that receive sound. 
And um, the whole installation is, is, is built like a neural, a neural net. Um, so she makes the analogy with the, the neural net and, and uh, neural circuitry. Of course, it, it's not related to the real, to real brain registering, but it's an image. Uh, why is it uh, an image? Also, feedback plays a role here. Also, like in our brain, feedback plays a role, operational role. Um, uh, here, the circuit is set up with a, a feedback dynamic, which means the light will affect the dynamic of the sound because there are sound receiving, uh, uh, light receiving elements, and inversely, the um, the the sound will be affected by the light, and the light will be affected by the sound, and that's the result.